Hey guys, Balkan Architect here and welcome to today's tutorial. Now in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about Revit families. So whenever you start using Revit and you get in sort of a rhythm as far as families are concerned, you're usually using and reusing families or you're creating your own, but uh, it's very rare that I hear that somebody actually took the time to explore the Revit libraries and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. We're going to be exploring Revit libraries, talking about all of the families that come with Revit and maybe some advanced families and just how can you implement those in your projects. But before I get started with the video I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial because it really helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe if you like Revit tutorials. I upload multiple tutorials each week. Also this tutorial was brought to you by you guys, my patrons. So first link in the description takes you to my Patreon. There if you choose to support this channel you will get access to all of my Revit project files. Oh, I have over 300 files so far and also you can get access to some of my advanced courses. I've got 28 one-hour courses and they all uh, basically tackle numerous advanced Revit topics. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. So whenever you're using Revit like I am right now, you use some of the basic families. So for example, if I go here to component, here we have the like the desk and uh, just the, uh, the, the basic families that come with uh, Revit whenever you start start off your project these basically come with the uh, these basically come with the uh, the template that you choose for your project but let's say you want to insert some files then you get uh, uh, then you get to your uh, basically your revit uh, family library now if you go here to insert and you go to load family this is your uh, family library now i'm just going to get go back a few folders to get to like the main library so you go here to libraries also here if you go here to the side you can always access them so if you're maybe messed something up you can always go here to uh, basically this look in uh, window and down you have the uh, in imperial library as well as the uh, yeah the imperial library so you can open that up and here you get your imperial library or you can go back a folder and then you have the us metric as well now i choose to use the us metric just because i use uh, metric units so that's what i'm going to be going for here now here uh, it can be a bit confusing what uh, what is what for so let's go over all of them and I'll show you what can all of this stuff be useful for so first the annotations here when we open up the annotations here you can see we have a lot of these uh, room tags ceiling tags but also we have the elevation marks the section marks the grid heads so for example the grid head head can be hexagonal if you want to use it like that and and stuff like that so you can really go here and customize your Revit uh, project so you can have maybe some uh, custom uh, section heads so you can see the different options that you have the different arrows things like that uh, you can also see some other things like I think we have the north arrow here yeah really useful things that you that you can use to kind of complete your all your whole project I think we also have some sort of a a scale yeah we have the graphic scale which is really useful to have so uh, you can use that just to add to your uh, project things like that also here we have a kind of uh, by specific category so if I go here into architectural you have just multiple tags things like that okay so let's go back here now we have boundary conditions now this is only used if you're going to do some sort of analysis so you can load in these uh, boundary conditions uh, to do all of your structural analysis with within Revit. If you're not using that then or doing structural analysis then you're probably not going to be using this. Here we have cable trays that's pretty self-explanatory just cable trays if you have a need for them use those. Next thing is casework. Now casework is really useful this is for completing your kitchens things like that you can do all of your uh, cabinets countertops all of that stuff so if you go here to cabinets as you can see you have multiple options they're all extremely parametric they're all quite adjustable so just choose whatever you want to use and then load into your project. I actually have a complete course on my Patreon where I show you how to use these uh, casework 
families to complete your whole kitchen within Revit. So that's really useful. So basically here you have all of your cabinets, then we have the uh, tall cabinets, things like that that go from the floor to the ceiling. We have those wall cabinets, the ones that kind of hang on walls. So it's really useful to use these families. Also countertops, they're all extremely parametric, so you can kind of adjust them to the size of your kitchen. So this is really a folder you should definitely explore. Then we have columns. Now columns are quite different uh, these columns and also structural columns. So the structural columns are used to be structural columns so they can actually be used in calculations. They have the analytical columns within them. The regular columns are just architectural columns. So if you take a look at those, they're just basic architectural columns. If you have a need just to represent a column architecturally, use these uh, for everything else. If you're using columns as structural elements, I suggest you go then for structural columns. Okay, let's go back. Uh, so we have the conduit so if I open that we have some fittings things like that so if you have any need for those uh, fittings uh, then just go there uh, nothing really fancy I'm not really familiar with this area of architecture so I'm not just going to be using them then we have curtain panels by pattern now this is really useful so whenever you create some sort of mass in Revit you can add a pattern to that mass and then you can fill that pattern by using one of these things so we have uh, the options for one to two step then we have the arrow panel then we have the octagon surface panel so basically all of those options that you have for dividing a surface into a certain pattern here you can fill that pattern using one of these families which is really useful even like the zigzag family you have that option okay let's go back so the next thing is curtain wall pan uh, wall panels so if you're just using regular curtain walls you can have a glazed or a glass panel you can have a solid panel or you can have an empty panel so just a hole in your glass curtain wall so if I go here into curtain wall here you can load those panels in so if these panels aren't loaded into your project just use one of those let's go back then we go to detail items. Now this is the holy grail of all of the detail elements. So whenever you want to create a detailed view in Revit, just go ahead and explore this thing. It's really amazing. So if I go maybe here to, I don't know, if I go to metals and metal fastenings, you can see here we have, for example, this bolt that you can just use and uh, just uh, explain that you have to have some sort of a bolt connection between maybe a wooden beam and some sort of a concrete element or something like that. That. So this is really useful. I actually explored this whole uh, this whole library of elements and use them inside of a, a detail uh, inside of uh, numerous details. And I cover all of this in my details in Revit course on my Patreon. So check that out if you're interested. So basically everything you can find it here. For example, masonry. You can find like masonry units. So if you're using some concrete masonry units here, you can see you have them all from the side, the section, the top, all of that. So as you can see, it's really useful to use something like this in your project. Okay, let's go back a few folders. So that's what all of the details items are for. So you use them for all of your details. Then we go to doors. Now this is really basic. Uh, the one thing to point out is the the first three are always going to be the curtain ones so if you have a curtain wall and you want to place a door on it you can't use the regular door you have to load in a curtain wall door and then you have to select the individual panel and replace it with a curtain uh, wall door so we have three options here and you can use those also here we have some hardware so if you just want to add a doorknob to the door or something like that you should check out this folder okay let's go back so we cover doors and of course the rest of these are just regular doors we have some garage doors but yeah they're pretty much regular doors so you can you probably know about this folder I'm sure of it okay let's move on here we have ducts so if you need ducts use these uh, also electrical I'm not going to cover this just because I'm not really familiar that much with electric electrical installations and also duct work so uh, just explore this if you need some of this, these things okay let's go back so here we have fire protection now this is really useful if you're doing projects usually there's some sort of code uh, that uh, that's for fire protection so here you have everything for example cabinets and here you can have a uh, 
maybe a hose cabin so you place this on wall if your code fire firefighting code requires that you have something uh, something like this so let's go back here also we have some valves sprinklers things like that you can use all of those okay let's go back so here we have furniture now furniture is pretty basic we don't have that much that many options we have a TV and a TV stand some tables some storage units like this so that's kind of useful things like that not much uh, but you can of course use it to make your projects look more interesting also one more tip that you can see me doing here just select the first family and then you can use the arrow keys to kind of switch down and exchange these uh, families okay let's go back so that covers furniture then we have furniture systems which is for some reason different than furniture but here you have for example more uh, more of these uh, storage families something like that also we have hardware and accessories like these brackets things like that not very useful but for example w work surfaces can be useful these are these parametric work surfaces as you can see and you can use them to well place your work surfaces also you have standing desks i don't know why there are in uh, system families and not just regular families but there you go so you have these two standing desks which is kind of cool to have in your project it's kind of modern touch to your uh, to your architectural project and of course you have some partitions things like that if you need to use something like this this is kind of cool this privacy uh, glass panel okay let's go back so we've covered the uh, furniture systems let's go back okay lighting this is really cool so if you go make sure to go to architectural if you're an architect and then for external you have some uh, like uh, external lights this is really cool to make your projects look a bit more uh, realistic usually for people forget to put like exterior lighting in their projects so something looks missing from the project so this is really cool to include uh, so we have that option of course internal so you have some your ceiling lights that you can use and then we have the floor lights which are really useful and then uh, with the table lamps things like that that can be really cool so just go here and you can add lighting so you can create some night renderings things like that or just to make your projects look a bit more realistic okay let's go back here uh, from lighting Okay, then moving forward, you have mass. So for all of the massing you can do in Revit, you actually have finished masses for some uh, like things that you can that are kind of simple shapes. So you have this arc, and you have all of these simple shapes here that you can use, like this dome or just a gable uh, roof, things like that. Okay, let's go back. Then moving forward, uh, we have some mechanical options. So for mechanical, you have some, uh, for example, you have your boiler, things like that, just mechanical elements. Now, I suggest that you leave this to your mechanical engineer, but you have your air conditioner, things like that. These can be very useful for architects just to make your projects look a bit more realistic. And then the, the mechanical engineers can use those to kind of complete the whole uh, project. Okay, let's go back. Uh, let's see. Okay, mechanical. Then we have openings. So if you have some openings that are not supposed to be doors, so just just openings you can use this so here we have openings with trim this is like a, a window and then we also have door like openings we have this circular opening things like that elliptical arc opening all of those things so this can be uh, really useful to use okay let's go back so let's see so we've done openings okay let's move on okay so we have pipes so pipes are for doing plumbing things like that so if you're doing plumbing just explore this i'm not going to be going over that just because it's not an architectural subject okay let's go to profiles so you can pretty much do all of the profiles you need so you need some wall sweeps things like that go here and find all of the profiles for that you need something else for example railings here we have some top railing profiles you want to have some nice decorative uh, top rail use this one okay let's go back also for framing for division profiles and pretty much anything as far as profiles go also here we have these detailed uh, these detailed uh, curtain wall uh, profiles so you can use these to kind of bring the details up uh, for your project so as you can see they look really good 
Okay, let's go back. Uh, then we've done profiles. Let's go. Okay, so here we have railings, and this is really cool because it separates railings. So people say that they can't find good railings. Well, here you can find cool railings. So we have the custom balusters. We have the glass ones. We have really cool railing uh, balusters, posts, things like that. So if you want to create some cool railings, uh, check this out. As you can see here, we have the support, things like that. Okay, let's go back. So here we have some side components. Now this is really cool just because it can make your projects look a bit more realistic so for example you have these accessories like bike stands uh, these things uh, dumpsters flagpoles uh, park bench planter trash can all of these things can make your projects look a lot more uh, realistic or livable or whatever so make sure to include them if you want to make it look a bit nicer also logistics now this is called kind of the concrete truck construction crane things like like that a pickup truck that's also always useful to have and then we have parking so we have the all of the different types of parking the arrows basically all of the signalization that goes on the ground you can use these we have a parking space a parking space for disabled people things like that uh, pavement stripe so all of these things are uh, you can find them here and then we have all of the utilities like for example a fire hydrant you wouldn't think to put a fire hydrant on your project but it's very good to fit the code of course and it can make your projects look a bit more uh, realistic okay let's go back uh, back a few, few folders okay then we have some specialty equipment now again this is a bit weird but it's very useful actually so for example under domestic you have these two com complete kitchens so if you want a complete kitchen for a studio apartment or something like that you can find it here. I don't know why is it under specialty equipment and not just, I don't know, furniture, things like that, but there you go. And then you have some more options like the, I don't know, like a dryer, oven, dishwasher, things like that. You need all of these appliances. You can find them here. You have a refrigerator, all of this stuff. Okay, let's go back. Then we have elevators and lifts, escalators, fire protection. Again, here we have something like exit sign, uh, things like that, fire extinguisher cabinet, all of these useful things that you, sh you should have. Also ladders, this is kind of cool. You have a bunch of ladders that you can include for your project. So if you need to have an option where you can climb on top of your building, put the ladder in there. Okay, let's go back. Uh, also classroom, library, you have these things, shelving, things like that. I don't find this quite as useful, but again, if you have a need for something like that, now you know where it is. Okay, then we have the structural elements. Now this is for pretty much all of the things that you're going to be using for the structure tab. Usually if you're using the architectural template, this isn't going to come in with the template. So if you need to add some columns, connectors, foundation, things like that, they, you can find them here. Now, I'm not going to go in depth, but they're all self-explanatory, so just check them out if you want. Next, we have a sustainable design. This is kind of cool. You have a bicycle rack. You have this shelf, exterior shelf. We have a recycling bin, round and square. We have solar panels, uh, walk-off mats, and I don't know, like a little a windmill turbine, uh, windmill power generator thing, which is kind of cool to, to have on your project. Okay, let's go back. Let's see what else we have. We have some system families, uh, which is empty, so we don't have it. And then we have title blocks. This is uh, really useful. Now, ideally, you would create a title block for your family or just a personal title block. But if you don't have the time, uh, use the ones that come with Revit. Let's go back. And here we have also windows. The first one is a curtain wall window, which you can use. And then the rest of them are just regular windows. Uh, some of them are skylights. So the skylights are going to be hosted on a roof and just regular windows are going to be posted on regular walls and also we have some nested families like the trim of a window and things like that okay let's go back okay so that covers everything that comes here with the u.s metric uh, library the u.s imperial library is a bit different but Pretty much the same thing and then if you want to find even more families bim object is a very good website where you can find families for your uh, 
uh, that all actually have manufacturers so you can find family and then you have a manufacturer so you can order that uh, that element and also Revit City is really good if you just want to make your projects look a bit better Revit City has a wide uh, range of different families that you can use so you just go here to downloads you log in create an account and then you can download uh, just an infinite number of cool Revit families okay so that covers everything about families and uh, I know this is some, this might seem a bit basic for some, but I actually didn't really take the time to go through all of the families and actually found out many things the first time I went through the entire material library. So I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, so that covers this tutorial. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. If you want all of my Revit project files, as well as all of my advanced courses, check out my Patreon first link in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll be back with another regular Balkan Arctic tutorial in a few days. Have a nice day.